Howdy hey, y'all, it's Chris with Show Fitness, favorite trainer of the belt buckle. Today, Skelly and I, we're going to teach you more about the rotator cuff muscle, the supraspinatus. Before we get into that, make sure to follow us on Instagram and YouTube. Check out our website, showfitness.com, if you want to become a trainer. Los Angeles, Monday, which is August 12th, and then September in La Jolla, San Diego. So, let's learn about the sits, rotator cuff, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. Supra, superior, means above. So when you check out the shoulder blade, which is the scapula, the humerus, the largest upper body bone, most broken bone in the human body, the clavicle is on the front side, the anterior. So for the scapula, we have a fossa for the infraspinous, infraspinatus, which is the infraspinous process. On top of that, we have the supraspinous fossa. Superior, above, inferior, below. So you have this nice little ridge and it's almost like a canal for the muscle to originate and it comes through this little gap, subacromial space is what they call this, and it comes down and inserts into the greater tubercle of the humerus. Now the supraspinatus inserts into the superior faucet, whereas the teres minor, also the infraspinatus, they insert into the same part of the greater tubercle, but the middle and inferior faucet. So it's kind of hard to see from, from that view, but if you ever get a chance to check out a skeleton, or even better, you go to uh, a university and you get to check out a cadaver, that's really awesome. I want to check out Dr. Rustin's course that he does where you actually get a look at the dissection from a professor, and that's really, really neat stuff. I was in class and we could see it, but I want to play with that stuff. It's pretty cool. So if you were to get a chance to, um, it sounds really creepy, but it's anatomy is fascinating. So if you get a chance to take a look at the humerus, you'll see that there's these like little ridges. And the head of the humerus, which is the top, you have the neck and you have the, the whole body of it. But then you have these two little ridges. You have one that's smaller, which is the lesser tubercle. And then you have one that's a lot greater, the larger, it's the greater. But then there's little ridges within the greater. So you have a, a superior faucet and then you have a middle and inferior. And that's where the infraspinatus as well as the teres minor, which I call the twins, and the other videos you can watch that, they go into that spot. So think of origin and insertion. Origin, it doesn't move. Insertion, that's where it moves. So a great example is the pec major. It starts and it's stapled down on the sternum. Then it goes away distally into the part of the humerus where it inserts, and that's the part which moves. So for the supraspinatus, on top it comes through, inserts right there, and just by looking at it from that angle you can see, you take a guess, what do you think this muscle does? It inserts right there. So the line of pull is really advantageous for that muscle to go here. So in the anatomical position, the frontal plane, sagittal plane, transverse, the supraspinatus AB ducks. And really for the first 10 to 20 degrees, that's, that muscle does the majority of the work. And then after you get past that 20 degrees or so, then your lateral medial delta is going to kick in. So this, and then let's go over the last action, we have scaption. So we have frontal, 30 degrees in, transverse, you're going to have scaption. So horizontal adduction, this is scaption. This is the, the famous test that a lot of the therapists will do is the empty beer can test. You internally rotate, and then you go within scaption to see how healthy that rotator cuff is. Now remember, as trainers, we're not therapists, we're not diagnosing. I was working with a girl the other day and she came in and she said her shoulder hurt. I didn't say you have a frozen shoulder, you have a torn rotator cuff. That's not our capacity. You gotta know your scope. We, if you know your anatomy, you know a lot, but always refer out if there's any doubt. So one of the things I had her do is do a shoulder flexion test, just to check out how she moves, abduction, internal external rotation without load, just to, to observe. That's a movement analysis. And then I gave her slight little palpations to see how she could handle a little bit of force. And what I found was when we did the little empty beer can test, I just gave her a little force right here, and it, there was a little problem. So I said, you probably get that checked out by your, your therapist, your doc. I'm going to teach you how to move properly. You'll probably be all right. So those are some little, little tests or things that you can do with your clients. It also stabilizes the glenohumeral joint. So the GH joint, the sternoclavicular, scapulothoracic, acromioclavicular, the subacromial space is right where the supraspinatus comes through. So again, just to review, we have the supraspinatus, one of the rotator cuff muscles, S-I-T-S, originates on the supraspinatus fossa, inserts in the greater tubercle. 
actions are abduction, scaption, and stabilization of the glenohumeral joint. That's the main role of the rotator cuff muscles. They want to stabilize that joint to the socket. Have a go and make sure to follow.